Okay, so welcome to Cooking with Cairo. And today's episode, if there is ever an episode that you want to learn anything from me, this would be the one to learn. And this is me making uh, my family's Sunday gravy recipe. Yes, I do call it gravy. I know this is a big topic of debate in Jersey. Uh, it's sauce versus gravy, gravy versus sauce. I don't care. This is what I was brought up on, so that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, so what are we going to be working with today? I've got it kind of lined up here. Um, first thing, the first tip that I'll give you is that when you're looking for uh, ground beef, or as uh, we would call it, chopped meat, is that we look for 80-20. Uh, so 20% um, fat, uh, and I, I really like that because I think the fat gives it its flavor. The other thing that I will be using is I'll be using a pound each of hot and sweet sausage. Um, for my tomatoes, uh, we're going to use uh, tomato puree, uh, tomato paste, and then I've got some uh, ingredients here such as parsley, oregano, garlic powder, black pepper, um, parmesan cheese, uh, eggs, some water, um, some breadcrumbs, uh, plain breadcrumbs, not Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. And uh, I was always one that my grandmother always used to cook with Crisco. I know that's probably terrible, but um, this recipe goes back. Uh, I'm the third generation making it. I refuse to change it for, uh, for anybody. Okay, so the first thing I do is I start by making the meatballs. So I want to first get that all going. Um, one tip uh, I tend to use, um, it never comes in the right um, size, but this is about a pound and a third. Of chopped meat and my grandmother used to always tell me you know it's, it's like two eggs per pound of chopped meat so I usually tend to use three eggs here I've already kind of uh, broken them up and I wound up getting a shell in there I thought I was gonna get away with that but no, not quite and then we just start adding some of our uh, ingredients so I'm gonna add some grated cheese <coughs> I am going to add some parsley. I remember when I called my grandmother to get this recipe, I was like, but how much, how much? And she's like, you'll know, you'll know. I was like, I, all I could do was cook with, at the time, you know, I needed like exact specifications. So the only thing she told me to do was two eggs per pound of chopped meat. And then what I'll show you is a, a a cup of uh, breadcrumbs and a cup of water. Everything else, she was like, you're on your own, kid. And it just comes down to the smells. It reminds me of my, my Sundays growing up. And so that's what we're going to do. And when it smells right to me and it, the texture feels right to me, I stop. There's no real way of knowing exactly how much I'm putting in. Some of that depends on the humidity. Some of that depends on the temperature of the kitchen. And when I'm baking it, it all changes. So the one ingredient that I didn't put into the meatballs is salt. Uh, I feel like the, um, the salt comes from the, the Parmesan cheese itself. So right now, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix this up. So once I have mixed the, uh, the, the meat and the eggs and all of that, then I start to slowly combine the uh, breadcrumbs and the water. And this is where it gets a little bit of, uh, you know, just experience. You just don't know exactly how much water or breadcrumbs to add. You just got to start getting in there and mixing it up and just kind of seeing how it feels. So the end result looks a little bit like that. I hope you can see that. I've got a little bit of water left over, just a little bit, maybe a couple of tablespoons, but that's how it worked out today. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start frying these up. Um, so we'll do that now. Okay, here we go. Check to make sure that oil's hot, that uh, Crisco, and then we're going to start frying up the meatballs. I mean, I, I've heard all people do this all different types of ways. Some people drop them, uh, the meatballs in their, their gravy or sauce raw. I've heard of other people baking them, uh, but again, this is what I was growing up with, and this is what I'm going to show you, and we'll go from there. So already that is 
That's already smelling amazing. These balls will wind up shrinking up a little bit. Now we'll come back in a couple minutes to see how we go. So we've got the meatballs frying right here. Um, one of the things I used to always struggle with, even until recently, was the first meatballs that I would put in would always tend to stick. And I didn't know if it was because I wasn't patient enough and not letting them release, or if the pan was too cold or whatnot, or if I did not add enough oil or, or Crisco. Uh, but since I started using these cast iron, this cast iron Dutch oven, which is what I use for artisanal breads, it hasn't been a problem. I love it. So one thing that I didn't touch on is um, the fact that I only use uh, chopped meat. Um, when I was growing up, uh, where we lived, we didn't have a butcher. When I was born, I was born in North New Jersey. You could walk down the street and you could get uh, ground beef, you could get ground pork, you could get ground veal, you could get whatever you needed. But when I grew up down the Jersey Shore, you couldn't get any of that. All you could get was chopped meat. You know, it was an unheard of to get you know the, the mix that you see almost in every store now. So that's why, you know, when I, it's my grandmother's recipe, but this is probably more adapted from my mom. All right, so I've got the last few meatballs that are going here. Here's the ones that I've already kind of fried up. Mm -hmm. Never make enough meatballs. Uh, no matter how much I make, they just always tend to go. Let me just see what my sous chef, sous chef thinks of my, uh, my cooking. All right, so I've got two left in there, but I'm gonna start getting the sausage going. Uh, I usually take a fork and I just poke holes in them just so that the, uh, the sausage is going to burst open. So let's get fried next. Again, one pound of sweet, one pound of hot. All right, so we're sizzling with this now. We got both the, the hot and the sweet sausage uh, frying up. As soon as they get nice and brown, then I'm gonna start to add my tomatoes. This part here gets a little messy, messy because I've got the, uh, the oil real hot. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my tomatoes. So I add my tomatoes and then plus a can of water. Same with the paste. Paste and then a can of water. All right, so the tomatoes are added. I'm going to take the wooden spoon because what we want to do is we want to deglaze uh, the pan. Try to get all those good bits that are on the bottom. Try to scrape those up so they can kind of meld in with the sauce here. And then we're going to start adding some of our spices. So we're going to add a little bit of pepper, some oregano, and a little bit of salt. And the one thing I haven't added yet that I've got to do is I've got to add a garlic clove or two. A raw garlic clove. That'll be next. So I added the uh, great uh, the garlic, um, and now I'm just going to let this come to a boil. That's what it's going to do is it's going to incorporate all the spices, and then after that, uh, I'm just going to turn it down to like a simmer for like an hour and a half. Just let it be. I don't have to do anything but stir it every so often. So we are about an hour and a half in. So right now, what I do is I put the meatballs in, and then we're going to let this kind of really slow simmer for another hour and a half. Now, if my gravy gets a little too thick what I will do is I will add a little bit of water to it um, otherwise it's usually just good it just needs a little bit of a stir and we're ready to go so this is always looking really good and we'll see you back so this is where our final product is right there it's just bubbling it's got about 27 minutes left um, but you can let this basically just cook all day it'll just like marry those flavors even that much more but that's basically the final product and it smells great